All of us in the federal government are challenged to provide timely and effective communication. This is the primary mission of the USGS, who for over a century has been in the business of providing scientific information to our cooperators and the public. Jamie and I would like to show you some of our newest interactive publications. We now have a modern communication tool in the form of story maps that allows us to share our mission more effectively. But the best way to understand our approach is to experience a few of our stories. First, we'll demonstrate how we transformed a science journal article into an engaging story. Recently, a journal article was published about the development of a new fingerprinting tool which identified the sources of mercury in the Great Lakes. This data shows the sources of mercury and the concentration in lake surface sediments. The sources in the northern Great Lakes are predominantly from precipitation, while industrial sources are concentrated near the larger cities. This report goes on to talk about the implications of mercury pollution. We can bring the story of USGS science alive by embedding video and other media. For example, this is the sampler used in this study. In addition to the data, this story map paints a clearer picture of the research and highlights the technology and methods being used. Behind the technical story, however, is a human story. It's about a team of dedicated scientists who spend a month on the Great Lakes every year, collecting samples, analyzing data, and developing new techniques for mercury detection. The lead scientist on this project, Dr. Dave Krabenhoff, has been studying environmental mercury for 28 years and says the development of this fingerprinting tool is a major breakthrough for detecting and identifying sources of mercury worldwide. This is progress that makes a difference in the quality of our lives. As we began working with scientists and identified many potential uses for story maps, we realized it would be important to establish an official USGS publishing process, and we engaged and continue to work with our enterprise GIS group, our Office of Communications, and our publishing program to establish that process. One of the potential uses that we identified and our first request for a story map was also one of our most interesting. In our science centers, we often write project proposals. These are documents with the purpose of producing action. Here's an example. This story is a project proposal for the remediation of lowhead dams, which are dams less than 10 feet high. Without reading one word, there is an immediate impact from seeing this graphic and aerial photo together which conveys a potential danger associated with lowhead dams. There are several remediation techniques that can be employed to reduce lowhead dam hazards, such as placing boulders downstream of the dam. So, so far, we've shown what is a lowhead dam, why are they dangerous, and a single remediation technique. Now we explore, is this a problem? Here we show the distribution of over 200 drowning victims from lowhead dams nationally. This map, in fact, is comprised of 35 smaller thematic story maps combined to create a larger story. Each point links to a state-specific story map. As you can see in Minnesota, there are 40 recorded lowhead dam fatalities. If we were talking to a Minnesota cooperator, we would pull out this Minnesota section, identifying the location where drowning fatalities have occurred and potentially dangerous lowhead dams requiring remediation. This concept of individual geographic stories within a bigger national story makes sense when we have to take our budgets and proposals to decision makers. We have one last story to tell. Most of the country knows the USGS primarily for one thing, earthquakes and an occasional volcano. But the US is involved in so many other science areas, such as flood response. During Hurricane Sandy, we launched the storm surge application showing the location, type, and data collected at USGS sensors deployed along the East Coast. During the storm, one of our developers noted that CNN had tweeted about this application. This is very exciting to us, but the tweet read something like this. USGS uses seismic technology to measure storm surge. 
we were like, I'm sorry, we used what? Now, CNN's basing this off of what they understand the mission of the USGS is. Now, there's websites for our flood program with links to applications and data and other web information, but these are all individual products. Now, we have the tools to tell our flood response story in a new way. In October of 2015, Hurricane Joaquin caused widespread flooding and damage in South Carolina. When a flooding event is declared, USGS field crews deploy a network of temporary sensors. These sensors collect hydrological and meteorological data that provides crucial information about real-time flooding conditions. An event-based application is launched within 30 minutes of the announcement. As sensors are deployed in the field, they are displayed on the map, showing the locations, sensor types, and data. We partner with FEMA to make a rough flood inundation map that assists in flood response. We then deliver these critical data during flood events to emergency responders and to support our federal and local response to mitigation activities. Now, CNN found our application, and that's great. They also found our data. That's great. But they didn't get the story. And with this flood response story map, you can get the data and you can get the application, but you can also get the story behind the science. A big piece of a successful story map program is the organization of workspace and ongoing support. Using the library collection page, you can easily manage your story maps in one location, which is critical when you have many staff contributing, creating, and publishing products. With a keyword and map search, readers can find your stories quickly. Finally, let's not forget about one of the most important federal requirements when we share authoritative information. Everything must have metadata. metadata. Everything we do in the government has metadata, from data to services to stories. Adapting our culture to new, modern, interactive reporting does not mean giving up our core needs. It means we get the best of all worlds. In these times of reduced funding and some less than enthusiastic feelings towards the government in incidences such as in Flint, Michigan and Burns, Oregon, I believe it's more important than ever that this country know the story of what we do, that we do provide value and we are improving lives through web services and data standards and GIS processing tools and search tools, we are becoming much better at sharing our data, but now we have the opportunity to more fully tell the stories of our mission. What stories will you tell? <laughs>